honestly, you know, the way things are going in the NCAA right now with NIL and the transfer portal and everything else, you know what, she's, I can tell she's starting to get really frustrated with certain things because it's creeping into that level. Because yeah. those kids, you know, you know, it's it's really a shame because I think it's 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 going to ruin it's going to ruin the game as we knew it, you know, the college game as we knew it. It's going it's going to it's just it's not going to it's never going to be the same again. But let's get into it. What what are your thoughts on the transfer portal? Like, as, well, I know there's different factors of it, but what's what's your thoughts on even the transfer portal just to start? Because I think this is well. As you you're, yeah. you're led into the point, it's completely changed, like not just college basketball, but just college sports. Period. Well, I'll give you I'll give you a great example. All right, uh, the, the 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 coach um, at St. Francis, where you know where I went, he played there. He was a really nice kid, Rob Kremel. Mm-hmm. Done a great job there. He's done a wonderful job there over the years. He's won some championships. He's he has he's been he hasn't gotten to the NCA. He got upset a couple of times, but you know he's been there in NIT. He, he's done well. Uh, he had a really good group of young kids. I went to see them play last year. Uh, a young guy who I had coached at St. Francis, and then went on to be he was my first assistant my first year as a head coach, and then he went on to be a head coach uh, himself. Uh, his name was Jack Fallon. He passed away recently. And, and he we put him, you know, he had been inducted into the Hall of Fame up at St. Francis, but um, we, we started a memorial game for him. So I I went to Hartford, we, it was against Hartford, and then and then up to St. Francis. And I, I'm talking to, to Rob Krimmel a couple of weeks, probably a month or so ago, and he says, Dave, he goes, my entire starting five is gone. I said, really? His best player, who... He was the only Division One scholarship the kid had. He developed him, big kid. He was sort of a big, you know, he wasn't that good in high school. He ends up taking, you know, the NIL money from UMass transfers for a year, you know, his last year. His fr- he has a really good freshman. He, he goes, he ends up going to Butler. Another kid goes, so I mean, that level, the, the, the mid-major level, it, all it's going to be is just going to be, uh, like a, you know, a like a – like for the blue blood, absolutely, and it's been that way for a while, anyway. But with the transfer portal being, with the transfer rules being changed so dramatic, dramatically, now it's just it's a wild west. It's it's nuts, yeah. and the NIL is is creeping in to that level. I mean, pe- people, uh, you know, people need to come up w- with with money. I mean, Sienna, for instance, I heard is is they're hiring people to raise money for that. For those little, uh, you know, combines, whatever they call them, you know, they're, so they have the the money to pay kids. I'm like, this is incredible. It's but it, that's the way it is, and and it's going. It's only going to get worse. And it's funny because for me, I'm always pro player, you know. So yeah. initially, when this happened, I loved all of it. Like I'm, I'm like, you need to blow up the system because I I thought for years that players needed to get some of those profits. But I think because, and you could correct me if I'm wrong on this, but like I, I feel like because the NSA took so long to take care of that side, now these rules have come in and it's just, it's kind of just mismatched everything now. And yeah. now it's a situation where it's like, I look at it now and now I'm like, hmm, I don't know if I feel quite the same way as I did before because you're seeing, like we're, we're you know, obviously you're glamorizing the benefits of of NIL deals and you know, kids getting paid for the name, image, and likeness. And we've seen how that's been bastardized over decades for, for NCA. But now you're looking at it from the aspect of, okay, well, you know, I had to get educated on it, like, in the last couple of years, where if you're, if you're unless you're, like, a five-star athlete coming out of high school, most likely you're not getting recruited because a lot of times in most of these schools, whether it's the Blue Bloods or mid-major, they're just going to be hitting the transfer portal instead of recruiting these four-star and three-star high school seniors. And right. I'm like, at a certain point now, I'm like, okay, the, now there's a lot of kids left in the portal. After like a year or so, you're not performing that well. Now all of a sudden, you, you not only could you hit the portal as a player, you might get pushed into the portal. And now you might be without a scholarship. So the right. thing that you worked so hard for, and you know, maybe it's a four-year scholarship, is really like a year-by-year basis now. And I'm like, I don't know how I feel about that, because there's a lot of, you see the statistics now, there's so many kids 
that are like that that are left in the ditch from this. Yeah, and it's only going to get worse. And you know, I, I saw it coming years ago um, with to me the, the mid major. It, it was it's just a matter of time because the only thing that, that kept it at least normal was the NCAA tournament because the NCAA tournament generated so much revenue. Right. And the popularity of the, you know, the upset and the, you know, the George Mason or whoever it is, you know, the Florida Atlantic or Butler, or whatever, you know, but yeah. that, exactly that, that always said, you know, that, 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 that makes the, the tournament so attractive and let's not screw around with it. Don't kill the, the goose, you know, you know, the lay the golden egg and all that. Well, it, at this point now, it doesn't matter anymore because that's just not going to happen anymore. It's not going to happen because those kids, they may start at that school. They may start at that, you know, now Butler, you know, it's not a good example, but I don't know. It's, 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 it's just gotten out of control. And most of it is, is a result of poor leadership with the NCAA and poor, poor foresight, no, no, no foresight at all. No understanding of how this is going to, affect the mid majors. So what's going to happen? Mid majors is no longer going to be division one. It'll be just like football. It'll be one double A. Mm. One double A. And then if the one double A kid, if he's that good, and you know what, that's fine. I agree with you. I mean, I have no problem with kids getting paid. I don't have a problem with that. It, the problem is that there's there's no legislation. There's there's no rules in place really hey right. I, I i don't that's just me I, I just think it's it's so out of control now that the way we the way we understand the game the way we've grown up watching the game is is now going to be you know it's going to be ancient history now if you're you know if, if if we can put you back into coaching right now if you're coaching whether it's a blue blood or, or a mid-major you know let's let's keep it at a mid-major if you were if you were coaching now, how would you handle the the, the transfer portal? Now that you're retired, you could look back on this. Like, how would you handle the transfer portal now? Um, I, I, in terms of taking kids, I, I think I would always, you would always have to keep an eye out for for if, if there was a kid that you felt could make Your make a difference, yeah. make you better. But now, now, you know, I think what's going to happen is like. Uh, you know, like I have a nephew who's at a Division two school in Pennsylvania. He's at one of the state universities at Lock Haven University. Uh-huh. Um, well, the number one thing I told him and his and his his sisters, my or his mother's my sister, is that I said you need to pick a school where they don't have a history of taking transfers every year, like 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 more than one. There's, there's nothing wrong with taking a transfer, but when you're taking three and four every year. Uh-huh. Then if you're a freshman coming out of high school, yeah. Then you know, you, are you ever going to get a chance to play? You know, I mean, that that that's to me that that's really the bottom line. But if if I'm coaching, like with like I, I talk to my daughter all the time because it's affecting her, uh-huh. and and you know now she didn't have anybody leave, yeah. Um, but the league, it's funny because I follow the Patriot League. I mean, some of the top players in the league, from Lehigh, from Bucknell, from they all left. Kid from from Lehigh went to, or Bucknell went to Fordham. Another kid went here. Went, so the whole the league's you know the league will be entirely Angel. different. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and and you know that happens all the time. I mean, kids transfer, uh-huh. but now with you know we don't have to sit out. That's a pretty big deal. Yeah, you know you. You know, the, the the one time thing, there's so many different and then you had waivers. You had you have a lot of other things going on, too. But at the end of the day, the transfer thing, I don't know. You know, I don't know if, if you weigh the difference. But what's what, what's worse? The NIL, if it's not regulated, if it's not controlled, there needs to be some sort of control. Uh-huh. You know, I mean, that's the way I look at it, you know, in terms of. And, and 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 how about your team? So if if you're giving a kid X amount of dollars and you're giving another kid less 
and this kid, and he's playing better than the other kid. I mean, they're you're yeah. just opening up a can of worms. Right, right. And especially like, and we're looking at it from the basketball perspective. Like, I think of it like the football perspective, where you could have a like a. I saw uh, the other day uh, a Wendy's commercial with uh, with Caleb Williams, who's a starting quarterback on USC, and you know he's in LA. So, you know, he's in that position. He's going to be drafted like first or second quarterback in the NFL next year. So he's raking in somebody's. I don't know all his deals, but just seeing him on a, on a few Wendy's commercials tells me he's making a few million just off of that alone. But my thing is, OK, that's him. What about the top offensive line, like the the the, the old guard, like, you know, the, the, the offensive tackle who's probably just as good at this position, but. Nobody looks at NIL deals for for old linemen. You know yeah. what I mean? Those, those are guys you don't speak about. Like, is he looking at Caleb Williams? Like, well, I might be number one just like him. Why is he getting three million dollars and I'm getting nothing? What's going on here? And how well, does that affect? Great. Like, I, I that to me is where I look at it. I'm like, yeah, there's there's a bit of a clusterfuck in this area. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, and and like you, you talk about me going back into the coaching thing. Guess what? Not no thanks. <laughs> I don't want any part. Uh, you know, I mean, I I probably stayed too long to begin with, even before this crap started. Mm-hmm. I think I, you know, now now having said that, I could, it doesn't really affect West Point as much, right? Because those kids are there for different reasons, and, right? Right. You know, but but you know what? They fired the men's coach last spring after the season, and which well, I was shocked. At West Point, and the he they um, they had two really good freshmen, the rookie of the year, and another kid, and they both left. They both left. Yeah, you know it's it's a little harder to transfer out of there. Like if you go to an academy, you can leave. If you you can you can transfer with no financial penalty before you start classes in your third year. If you stay beyond that. You you owe the government back like an incredible amount of money. Oh wow! I didn't even know it that. Th- oh, the do- oh, it's unbelievable. Oh yeah, it's like to, to go to an academy that they put the dollar figure on that is like like eighty some thousand a year. A year, yeah. Because they give you every well, you get so you get paid. So you you draw you draw a paycheck because you're in the army, right? Or you're in the so you're in getting the paid. Yeah, you're getting paid. I mean, you're getting a paycheck. It's not a lot, but you're getting a, you're getting paid. Yeah. I mean, people if they if they would have done that years ago with the rest of the NCA, we probably wouldn't have to deal with this crap now. <laughs> so, so what would you like if you know commission it for a day? Like, how would you fix this? Like, if in in your mind, like, how would you how would you look at fixing this? Well, I, I think uh, you know, I think if if you were going to try to resolve this issue across the board i i just don't know i don't think he can i think yeah. i think it's got to be back now well no yeah there, there'd have to be a huge split so you'd have to take the power five schools and and, and they would have to go their their own way and then and then that and then you know it's like open checkbooks the sky's the limit mm-hmm. i mean you know the com- you know whatever that trying to think of there's a the name for it they they have these these groups that raise money um uh, yeah, almost for like each. almost like lobbyists almost <laughs> yeah there's a name for it it slipped my mind but they have it everywhere i mean and they have it for sports they have it for for a sport at a school i my my son-in-law uh won the patriot league in the baseball mm-hmm. and um he played in the uh in the regionals down at, at university of virginia in Charlottesville. So we went down to the games 14. So he ended up having to play Virginia. Virginia's really good, Oklahoma. And I forget who the fourth team was, but so, but there's a, a, a good friend of mine was a great player in Virginia um, way back. His name is Barry Parkhill. He's an all American mm-hmm. played in the pros. Um, he, he's an, he's an associate AD there. I had a breakfast with him. He took me over. He was showing me, he was telling me, how they raise money for football, basketball. It's unbelievable. The money. Yeah. It's unbelievable. I mean, you know, how much, but they got to do it. 
I mean, for yeah. like Villanova, the word is that yeah. the best player in Villanova supposedly is getting something like seven hundred fifty. So he didn't leave. So he so he didn't. I don't know. Crazy. I mean, and, so and, when, that, and when you're getting paid that much as a as a student, I'm playing devil's advocate here. But when you're getting paid that much as a student, how seriously are you taking your classes? Because I mean, that's part of the the you know the 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 stuff, oh, sure. part that you're yeah. selling, right? Like, is if you're still going to be a student, you're still going to be taking your classes seriously. But if I'm making two million dollars a year, am I taking calculus that serious? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree. I mean, I, I don't know where that's going, but some of these kids, you know, especially the, I was listening to somebody today on on serious uh, college stuff talking about the the quarterback in Notre Dame. Who who transferred there from Wake Forest? Right, and he, he's he's a great. I mean, he's really he was unbelievable. He Wake really Forest this year too, I think. Yeah, and now he's in Notre Dame, and they're talking about him being like the, the best quarterback they've had there since I'm not sure who, but you know Joe Montana. I don't know. But anyway, uh, you know, I'm thinking when I I missed that one. When did he? I didn't realize he went there. I didn't realize that was him, but. What are they paying them? I mean, I mean, yeah. seriously. So it, it, it just, it, I, I think if I had a, if I had to go in there and try to get this squared away, you'd have to separate it. You'd have to figure it out. Who ends up going? And and is it just is it football? Is is one group and basketball? Another group. Don't yeah. you think basketball might involve more schools? That they, they are like because the Big East is is a power. A full basketball conference. It's not football, yeah. you know. Um, so basketball might involve more, say, like a hundred some schools. Football might involve le- a lot less than that, mm-hmm. you know. If you take the top X amount of schools, and then you'd have to set up criteria, and then the mid majors. I mean, you're sort of. I think you'd have to put a cap on it, don't you think? How much you can pay a kid? Yeah, it's, it's 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 interesting. Like I said, I was all for this, but now, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of like in the middle now, where I'm like, I see both sides. Where this is like, yeah, I'm still for the players getting their money, and I definitely get it. But at the same time, you're like, man, like this this is a lot of like when you see a kid, and by the time he's done, you know, th- four years of school, he's went to three different universities. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, what program did he finish? Like, if he and, and does he play pro? Even if he made all this NIL money, it's not a guarantee that he's going to be a pro player, whatever sport that he's in or he or she that's in, right? Like some, especially yeah. like the women's, like women's basketball. Like I, I know um, what LSU, when they won, uh, Angel Reese, like yeah. I know she's she's making a lot of money, but she's making way more than what a, what a WNBA player is going to make. So when she's finished school, yeah. What is she looking at? Like to her, that's it's it's like a significant downgrade in pay unless they they raise this money up for the WNBA in the next few years. Like, how does that work for her? Well, it's funny too when the NIL thing first started. There were those twins from uh, they were Fresno State and they ended up transferring to Miami. Yes, the two blondes and and, and they're making they were making a fortune. Mm-hmm. And then I think they, I, recently somewhere there. Those two had some sort of a they broke up or something. I don't know yeah. what's going on. <laughs> they just like Instagram I, stars and stuff or whatever. Still, yeah. Well, they they stepped away from basketball to go yeah. into like WWF or something. I don't oh, know. Wow, it's great. Well, I mean, whatever. I mean, mm-hmm. God bless them if they can make that kind of money. But I, I, I just think, how about the the gymnast from LSU? I mean, how much money does she make? Yeah, I mean, supposedly like millions, millions. Doing promos and doing this and doing yeah. that, so but I just think from from an institutional standpoint, you'd have to put a cap on what you could, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Are, are you are you setting money up with local? I, I don't know exactly. There's got to be some sort of uh, you know consistency. That's all. That's what I think. So. Yeah, because like I said, when you're getting national deals, I mean, some of these guys are in their power five schools, but when you're getting these national, like. To get a Wendy's deal, like there's some pro, there's a lot of pro players in football that that are not getting a Wendy's deal. They're yeah. not on a Wendy's commercial, you know, at, at, at a, and they could be like all pro. They're not getting a Wendy's commercial. Yeah, I just I just think that part of it is crazy. And and for you, like, you know, obviously you're coaching, you know, like a, a mid major programs. Like, how important would recruiting a high school player be now? You know, and I ask this because I feel like just in my 
education of this now. It's like they're becoming like the running backs of the NFL, like the big men of the NBA, where it's like they're just it just seems like all of a sudden the last few years are not high school seniors are not valued the same come going into college. Like, what would you tell a high school senior that's maybe not like an all American, you know, that's now struggling to get recruited at a D1 level, like end <laughs> with this transfer portal era? Uh, you know, they're still getting recruited. My, I have a, my niece who's a, a junior in high school mm-hmm. in Philadelphia. She's, you know, getting recruited pretty heavily. Uh, I'm not sure where she, what level she'll be at, but yeah. it hasn't really affected the women with the guys. I, yeah, it's I still think, you know, I still think they're there. I mean, it, it depends on if you get if you go down to that next level kid who's maybe somebody you take a chance on, somebody who, you know, you're like, ah, you know, let me project him two years down the road. But the problem then is you take a kid like that, you you, you develop or he develops and. It, now, like, you don't know if he's going to even stay. Yeah. Like, he you might know, leave. I, I, you might develop him, but he might leave. <laughs> what happened, that's what happened to, at St. Francis. Right. And it's happening all over the country. And and then what also what's happening, too, on top of this, you're seeing, like, the, you know, like, a Power 5 conference basically dissolve in front of our eyes, which is the Pac-12. Like, yeah. what do you think of all that? Because I know a lot of that is tied to, to TV contracts and – Everything else, yeah. all of that's happening at the same time as on top of the transfer portal and, and the NIL situations. Like, I think it's fascinating watching the Pac-12 dissolve like this. I, I it's it's mind blowing to me to see where that's yeah. like. What do you how do you feel about that? Just seeing that conference just literally blow up right in front of us. It's all about money. I, it's it's just the money. You know, they're going where the money is, and, and you know, some of these guys are, are getting put on a pedestal. These commissioners for being so proactive. And being ahead of the, you know, just one step ahead of the next guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of these commissioners just like, <laughs> yeah, you're playing Russian roulette. I mean, I, I mean, God bless. I mean, Cal ends up landing on her feet, right? Yeah, but man, that's that's like cross country traveling has got to be insane for them. Oh, oh, yeah, I know, no question. Yeah. But they, they didn't have any other options. Yeah, you know, they had no other options. Where are they going to go? I mean. Yeah. It's incredible. Where, 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 so where did Stanford go? They go to the ACC. I think they follow, they follow Cal to uh, the ACC. They're the only two. So is Cal, yeah. It's, you know, I mean, but, what, you know, when UCLA and Southern Cal left, I, I, I knew then. It was just a matter yeah. of time. Yeah. It's like the dominoes are going to fall. And, you know, you're going to always have to try to, I mean, in some of these poor, I mean, I feel bad for some of these athletic directors. It's like, I just saw, I just read recently, like Army, uh, West Point, Army is, is always has been independent in football for so long. Mm-hmm. They're in the Patriot League and all the other sports, you know, basketball yeah. and everything else, soccer and those sports. But football, they've been independent. Whereas a few years ago, Navy, they jumped into the, uh, um, the AAC, the American right. Athletic Conference. And now with the AAC, it was blowing up because Cincinnati left and so somebody else, uh, SMU left, mm-hmm. uh, so whoever. So now they're going after Army to, to, to go football. Mm. They want Army to go to that league in football, which would make sense right. with Navy. Right. You know, and, and, and I mean, I think an Army's a lot better now than they had been. You know, they the, the coach that's there now has done a really good job. They, mm-hmm. They've been nationally ranked, you know, a couple times recently. So I, I just think that – Again, you, you you're always looking two steps ahead. Sooner or later, the dust will settle, I would think. You know, and mm-hmm. and these leagues are like 18 teams. <laughs> like, I know, like how you do know, you regulate this? Who's going to be the first 20 20 team league? You know, it's crazy. <laughs> we might see that much sooner than we think. That's the funny well, thing. I know. Well, they get that division. That- no, because I think there's still like, especially with the Pac-12, I think there's still like two schools that, or three schools that are left that still hasn't been picked up. So Who's at Washington? I think State. Washington and Oregon State, I think, are the only two that are still left, I believe. Washington State and Oregon State, I believe. But I'm not sure. Yeah, Washington State. Or- yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not Washington sure where they're go. going. I'm not even sure. They might have gone to the Big the Big Twelve. I'm not even sure, but it's it's just crazy to see like this because even that the travel. I'm just thinking of the traveling. Like, 
Like, you know, because these guys are still in school. They're going to miss like a week of class. Like, <laughs> it's crazy. Awful. Let's not forget, too. And this is what everybody's talking about now is that, you know, it's one thing for football and even for basketball and they're flying charters. But what about baseball? What about right. soccer? What about these other sports? Track. I mean, they can't. I mean, yeah. I was got to go play at North Carolina State. I mean, it's nuts. Nice. And they can't sustain that like that. Yeah, that's that's it, it's it's crazy. So what what do you think happens yeah. with like with just college sports overall within the next ten years? Do you think it's kind of just gonna to your point like the dust will settle and it'll kind of balance itself out, or do you think like what's happening with yeah. the, with the Pac twelve is just the beginning, and there's like maybe like a super uh, conference think, or there's like uh, two there's like two leagues. Yeah, it'll be no, it'll settle down. It'll settle down, but there'll be. You know the power. The power five will be huge. It'll just be power five will instead of including fifty teams, it'll be eighty teams or nine. And that's the way it is, and that's the way it's going to be. And that separation will then, I think, morph into something else with basketball, because because mm-hmm. they're they're your two revenue driven sports. Sports, right? That, I mean, you know, you can say all you want. I mean, and, and there's very, very you know. It's it's like with women's sports, they're, they're just not generating revenue other than right. a handful of like UConn women or, you know, LSU women probably or right. Iowa women. Yeah, they're, they're just, you know, and that's the way it is. I mean, I feel I mean, I, I've i always been a big proponent of gender equity, especially after coaching men and then women but, mm-hmm. and having daughters. But at the end of the day, money talks. I'm sorry. Yeah. It, it, that, that, that's the way it goes. The WNBA is lucky to be in existence. I mean, it really is. I mean, I mean, it, it doesn't make money. It does. I just talked to George Seacrest. Uh, you know, Cal, your, your brothers played with George. You know, you know right. what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. His daughter's playing with the Dallas. Uh, you know, Dallas WNBA team. Yeah, the Dallas Wings. They're, they're in the uh, playoffs. They start this week, uh-huh. and. Um, the money, like I was talking to him today about now, wh- where is she going to go? Is she going to sign a contract in Europe? Because that's where the money is. Yeah. And and I mean, to make a WNBA team is actually pretty, it's pretty hard to do. I mean, they drafted four kids uh, and, and Maddie Secrets is the only one left. The rest of them are all gone. They're gone. Wow. Kid from Iowa, Iowa, Iowa State's gone. The kid from they were who else? Um, I can't think who else, but they, they they drafted like some pretty good players. I thought they were pretty good, but yeah. that happened to my niece. And my niece was a hell of a player. She's with a Connecticut son, but all of a sudden, all these kids were coming back from you know from Europe, from Asia, from from the you know, and those rosters. There's not that many yeah, spots. Yeah, those spots, rosters. yeah. No, and the money's not that good. It's just yeah. it's not that. Good. Yeah. I, I, so, I, had a, I had a chance to interview um, um, a, a player. She played overseas pretty much her whole career. It was one of my first uh, series of podcasts like six, seven years ago. And I remember I asked her, like, hey, like, what about, did you ever think about doing a WNBA? And she was like, not really, because she was like, I made the money I was making overseas. It didn't make sense yeah, to, to, to come and do it. And then, and then wear my body out, you know, trying to double dip in both leagues. Like, I didn't want to wear my body out either. And I'm like, yeah, it make it makes sense because it's it you see it it gets the promotion, but it just doesn't like we're just for whatever reason we're just not there yet where at least the the equity can go up. Like it's you know at least for WNBA players, like it's 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 too bad though because I mean it's a really when you sit down and watch these games, as you know, it's man, it's a really good league. No, they're good. I mean, they're good players. Yeah, they really are. I mean, I, I just I, I just don't know you know in terms of the marketability and. Or, or people willing, you know, to spend that kind of money, you know, to, and they, 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 some of them have a much better fan base than others, mm-hmm. you know, but then it seems like every other year, like these franchises are like blowing up. I can remember when Cleveland had a WNBA team and, you know, somebody else had one and so San Antonio had one and they don't have it. I mean, they're all gone. Yeah. You know, they just, it is what it is. So, you know, my, the kid I had an army, Kelsey Manato, she, she uh, was drafted by uh, San Antonio, uh, and uh, you know it was a great experience. But at the end of the day, she had a military obligation, so she couldn't do it. 
I mean, I had to go through hoops to just to get her to go to training camp because I wanted her to experience that, you know? Mm-hmm. So crazy. So I'll, I'll hit you with some, a few more questions before we, uh, before we wrap up, but um, now that you're a retiree of this, of this game of basketball, when you watch it now, um, you know, both the men's and women's game, do you get that itch? Like to maybe like, just maybe coach a, a couple weeks or do you just, you're just like, Oh, I'm just, I'm, I'm happy being a fan right now. No, yeah, no, I don't. I mean, the only time is when I watch my daughter's team play at Holy Cross, you know, that's the mm-hmm. only time where, you know, and 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 it, it gives me I have that, you know that that avenue where I can get on the phone with her and say what you know what the hell are you doing <laughs> is this you know yeah do this and she's great I mean she you know she she humors me at times and there's times where I just don't you know I don't say anything because I know how frustrated she is but um, that's enough for me I mean I'm I'm good I mean I. I, I, I had a good run and, and it, it's I'm at a point in my life where it, it's fun watching, you know, and, and I like to follow certain certain programs. But, um, you know, I, I'd love to see Maris, you know, get a little more competitive. Yeah. Um, but, um, you know, and, and the coach that's there now is a really good guy. I, I know him years ago when he was a young assistant and uh He's, you know, he, he he got to the finals last year against Iona. Yeah. But uh, the regular season was a real roller coaster for him. But uh-huh. um, I'm hoping maybe that'll help him this year. But again, I don't, know. I don't know if he lost. You know, I know he lost a really good player the year before transfer, who was I think he was a rookie of the year in the league. So who knows? Who knows? Now, with everything that's happening, like who's a coach that you see that's on the NCAA landscape that you think is going to have like a successful career that like that you have your eye on that that coming up now is 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 could be something really good down the line on, on the men's side. Oh, um, you, you can pick either either side. Well, yeah, no, on the men's side, uh, yeah, I, you know, some of these. It, it just seemed to me that. Some you know some of the really established coaches all sort of retired around the same time. Mm. Everybody's just stepping down. You had look, look you know you had Coach K and then you had Roy Williams. Williams and then yeah. you, had, you know there's this yeah. guy, the next guy. I mean uh, Mike Bray at Notre Dame. Uh, guys that I knew, guys that I you know that I've known throughout my career. Um, but I you know some of the younger guys coming up. Um, you know, I think I, th- I think Danny Hurley is probably the hottest coach. I mean, in terms of what he did, the guy at Florida Atlantic. I can't think of his name. I mean, I, I think know. he's yeah. He, I think he he did a terrific a job. job. He, he's yeah, and he he paid his dues. He worked, you know, he's worked his way up. But Dan, I've known Danny since you know I knew his dad. You know, the coach at St. Anthony's High School. Bob yeah. recruited his kids over the years and I knew Bobby a little bit, Bobby Hurley who was uh-huh. at Arizona state, but Danny, D- Danny played at Seton hall and, and, you know, he's just, he, he's a real, uh, he's a grinder. I mean, he's a real grinder. He's a hard worker and, and I, he's a good guy. He's, he's, he's a really good guy. I was really happy for him. I, I think he really, he really, you know, he, he paid his dues. I'm not sure how they did last year. I would think, like, just off the top of my head, I would think, like, Shaheen Holloway probably is uh, one coming up, especially what he did with St. Yeah. Peter's the year before. Absolutely. Yeah, Shaheen. Uh, I'm trying to think of Shaheen. Shaheen might have played with Danny at Seton Hall. At Shaheen Seton played. Hall. Oh, yeah, he played there, yeah. Shaheen yeah. He was recruited. Good, he was a good player, too. Yeah. Well, he was recruited by uh, a guy who your brother knows well, uh, Kenny Williamson. Um, Eggman. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was an assistant in Iona with me, and um, when we were there, and 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 Kenny uh, was at Seton Hall. George Blaney was the coach at the time. He had been at Holy Cross and then went to Seton Hall. But Shaheen was a great player at Seton Hall, and um, you know he he's paid his dues. I mean, you know, the St. Peter's run was phenomenal. Yeah, I mean that's a great one. I think Shaheen's a great one. So yeah, those those are probably the two guys that I just because I know them and I uh-huh. you know they you know it's it's local. I'm not real familiar on the West Coast. I mean, I've always been a big 
fan of Jamie Dixon. I just think he's, you know, he's really good, you know, what, what he does. And he's, I'm not sure how much longer he's going to do it though. I mean, he's some of these guys, I got to believe they're like, you know, they're getting burnt out. It's just uh-huh. to deal with, well, the deal to work in that environment, like for me, like, you know, I retired at just the right time not to deal with that, but mm-hmm. to be at that level and to work under entirely different circumstances mm-hmm. and then to have all this hit you all at once and, and still have to be and stuff and, oh, yeah. pressure and to be, you know, to be the expectations. And, you know, I mean, I think, you know, Jamie just, you know, he, he's, he's good. I mean, he's really good. So, there's, there's, you know, there's good people out there. I mean, on the women's side, I, you know, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of good coaches on the women's side, I think, you know, but uh, coach of Merlin, that's who my daughter played her in the first round, Merlin, you know, mm-hmm. and, and think about it. I mean, the, the Merlin, would have, they had Diamond Miller who ended up, you know, being, I think she was what the second pick in the, in the M, in WNBA. Yeah, draft. Yeah. She was a pick ahead of Maddie Seacrest. Um, I mean, they would have had Angel Reese. Angel Reese was in Maryland. Wow. You know? Yeah, that's right. She was yeah. being a Baltimore kid, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I, she's, a, she's a hell of a coach. I played, I coached against her in the NCAA tournament back in 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. So, uh, but that's, you know, that's about it. That's about it for me. And, and, and what was your most enjoyable time you had coaching? Uh, I had a lot of, them. I, I can't pick one, you know, I think it embarrassed. I think, you know, your brother's senior year was one of the most fun I had because that team really overachieved. I thought, um, nobody, nobody thought we were, you know, we were going to be that good. And we were, we were, I think, you know, it's just a really good, you know, we didn't win the championship, but we, um, th- that was a fun year. I think my years there were, you know, had some great memories there. You know, we, we try to do a reunion every year up in, in Poughkeepsie at Seacrest house. We need yeah. to get your brother down. That. <laughs> um, the, 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 the experience at army was, was fun. I mean, it was just fun. It was tough taking over for, for when she passed away, yeah. but uh, you know, the experience with my daughter and then having the success we had and the, and the kids that we had, we just, you know, it was, it was a great run. We had. we went to four national tournaments in a row. And that's hard to do. I mean, no other academy's ever done that in any sport, you know. I mean, in, in men or women. And um, it was hard to do. But, um, you know, you had kids that really were, were bought in and they were invested. And, you know, they were really fun to be around, too. And, you know, and I guess one of my last questions I'll, <laughs> I'll have to ask, because, of course, I'll, I guess I'll have to ask about, about my brother's, uh, you know, journey there at Maris. But, like, you know, with, with that said, and, I, and I'd love for you to sandbag him, but it's, it's definitely up to you how you want to answer the question. <laughs> but but, but how, how did you enjoy, you know, you mentioned it before, like you enjoy coaching. But, but, but what about him is that you remember that kind of sticks out? Well, he, his temperament was, I mean, he used to drive me nuts when he was younger mm-hmm. because I just, I, you know, I, I said, is this a Canadian thing? You guys are so laid back you know, between <laughs> it. The other guy drove me even crazier, the guy Keanu, because that mm-hmm. kid was so talented. But it was like you had to find a switch, you know, to turn on or off. I mean, it was unbelievable. I mean, he, he, you know, he was so, so good offensively. Because and I had recruited him when he was in high school, so then now we get to your brother, and I mean, and I'm thinking, you know, now these guys are from two different parts of Canada, so it's just like a Canadian thing, you know. And he's all <laughs> laid back, but he, he 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 had such a, a a calm presence about him, and his ability to just play within himself was always to me was so special. I mean, I had always wished there were other kids that had that kind of quiet, just calmness. Now, and he struggled at times because of, he had injuries. He played through a lot. He played through a lot of problems with stress fractures or whatever, yeah. you know, yeah. whatever he had. Yeah. You know, a lot of stuff going on, but you know, he, he was, he had a great, great senior year. I mean, his junior year, he had some great games. 
but then he had then he was out for a while. His foot was in a boot or whatever. But um, he, he, you know, we we just had a really good. We had a great run that senior year, and he he was a, he was a huge part of that. Him and uh, Stevie Paterno and Joey O'Connor and George Seacrest. I mean, those guys were those guys were were really special guys. I mean, they were, they, it was just a good group. Now, I, I know, and the last thing I want to ask you, too, is, uh, you know, and we reflected earlier about, you know, you coaching against your daughter, coaching against Marine, but, like, now looking back on it, like, what was that experience for you? Just, you know, were that moments coming full circle now where you're actually coaching against her in real games after, you know, having her over your shoulder as a little kid, watching, you know, re- recruitment tapes and, you know, breaking down plays and games and such, and now you're on the other you know, other side of the court coaching against her. Like, how did that, like looking back on it now, like how does how does that make you make you feel? Well, at the time, it was it was uh, really nerve wracking, you know, because mm-hmm. I, you know, we went into it was during COVID, so so yeah. there was a lot of restrictions. Restriction. You couldn't have there was no fans in the stands. My family couldn't come. Uh, my so wife they let my wife go to the game. That's it, and um, it was it was it was it was really. Very stressful, to be honest with you, because the, the way the schedule was set up that year, they they broke the league down. There's a t- it was a ten team league, and they broke it down into three pods. So our pod had four teams: Boston, Holy Cross, Army, and Colgate. Mm-hmm. And then you had another pod with the Pennsylvania teams: Lehigh, Lafayette, and Bucknell. Then those Southern teams: Loyola, and Baltimore, and Navy, and American U. So we didn't play. The only teams we played outside of our pod was Navy. Yeah. And, um, you know, I had to play her originally. We we're supposed to play six times. Oh, wow. And I was like, yeah, it was crazy. So, and the way it was, was you couldn't, you weren't allowed to stay overnight anywhere because of, of COVID. So they had to come to play at West Point on a Saturday. And then they had to turn around and go back. And then we had to leave on Sunday morning and go play there on Sunday. Oh wow! And it was yeah, it was like CYO. You know, I'm like, this is nuts. <laughs> so the first game just attracted so much attention. It was nationally, and just I mean, you had national attention. You know, you had all these major networks. You had you know Associated Press right now, a lot of stuff going on. And they followed it for the next couple games. But for me, it was just. Uh, you know, I, it was, it was, I mean, she beat us pretty good. And, and in that first game, and I was surprised because I thought, you know, I thought it was going to be a good game. And I really thought we would beat them. Mm-hmm. And, um, but our kids, I, I don't know what, I don't know what happened. That was a weird team. That, that last season was weird for me. Mm-hmm. You know, it was, a, it was a tough way to end my career, to be honest with mm-hmm. you. You know, in the COVID and, you know, you had a lot of stuff going on there. There were days, you, you know, you would get ready to leave for a game and and somebody would test positive and game yeah. canceled. And it, it, that happened, I can't tell you how many times that happened. We were getting ready to go to play Navy, a huge game, Army-Navy, and two of my kids tested positive. And we couldn't play the game. And then, you know, whatever. So going back to playing Holy Cross, it was – you know, we would go there. Game, the games were competitive, but it was, it was just, uh, it was just sort of weird. You know, like you're like, how, how am I supposed to feel after I lose to my daughter? <laughs> how are you supposed to feel? You're competitive, uh, but you're also game. happy. It's like a weird, it's a weird medium I'm, to be yeah, in. I'm happy, I'm happy for you, but please, you know, come on. You know, no <laughs> point. So I ended up being one, one and three against her. Mm-hmm. It's like we only played four. Times. four we ended times. up playing four. Times. So, so, but the last time we played her was my last game at West Point. It was the last time we played at West Point. So, there was, and we won, and we played. You know, we played well. And I had a couple of kids that had been out. My one of my best players was had been coming back from an ACL, and she really, she really was, you know, her, herself. She was really good. Yeah. The year before, she was so she she was starting to get back into it later in the season when we you know we should have beaten them at least twice, but uh, at least we beat her. 
But, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously thrilled for her. I was her first win at Holy Cross. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Because that was her first year, yeah. And then, and then her second season, uh, I think she was picked preseason fifth, and she won the league, right? Which is great. And then last year she was picked preseason four, and she won. She went to the NCAA. Yeah. She didn't win the regular season last year, but she beat BU in the championship game. Beat him actually. BU was sixteen and zero in the league, and she beat him. In the regular season, then she beat him in the in the finals. She had the number. Yeah, well, she well, they were good. BU was really good. They'll be good this year too. But um, so we'll see. You know, it'll it'll be fun following her this year. It'll be it's, there'll be a lot of pressure on them to win. I guarantee you they'll be picked to win the league. That's awesome. I'll, I'll be tuning in for sure. Um, my and my last question I, I want to ask you is just. You know, for a coach coming up, what advice would you give to a coach coming up now, especially in in this landscape of 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 where the sport is, especially on the collegiate level? Like, what advice would you give to a coach collegiate. coming up who wanted to look this way? Collegiate level, I, 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 I honestly, I don't know what I would tell. I, I, in terms of dealing with all the things you'd have to deal with, um, in terms of recruiting and. And, and being able to maintain a roster and NIL and everything else. But if you're just talking about just coaching and, you know, you just need to be, you know, stay true to yourself and, and do, do, do things the way, you know, do what's comfortable for you, you know, treat people to just treat kids the right way. And I think the families recruiting, the recruiting aspect of with the families is important, but that becomes a huge I think in today's, you know, environment, you know, the way even families are with, with their kids, you know, everybody's, everybody's like you know, helicopter parents. Everybody's, it's, it's, it's crazy. I mean, I, I, I don't even know how, I don't know how my daughter handles some of the parents. Cause I, I, I sit in the stands and I try to stay away from them. Uh -huh. It's like, Whoa. I mean, it's now, I mean, it's always been tough with certain people, but you know, I didn't, deal with that as much at West Point uh, -huh. uh until, until my last couple of years. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I'm like, Are you serious? I mean I remember bringing players in saying, hey, your parent you, you better tell your parents. <laughs> you know yeah. what? They can't be, you know, you, you get a problem. And you know, it, it was it was it was crazy. I had some, yeah. I, I hear the I hear the horror stories from some friends who are coaches like either oh, it's college or like even like like AAU and stuff. And they tell me the stories and I'm like yeah, oh. I don't want to coach. I'll, I'll still look on the sidelines and watch. <laughs> I'll do this. <laughs> well, I never, you know, the thing about me was when you go back to the very first thing we talked about, I, 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 you know, I never coached at any other level. Right. I never coached high school. I never, co I mean, you know, the only, the, the lowest level I coached was when I coached the freshman team when I was, when I was finishing up school, you know, right. and, and after that I was coaching at that level for my whole career and I can't, I, I have so much respect for high school coaches and dealing with what they have to deal with today. Yeah, it's tough. I, it's, it's unbelievable. Some of this, I, you know, I mean, my wife was a teacher for, for 30 plus years and some of the st harder stories she would come home with, you know, from just dealing with that, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. So, but anyway, this was, this was fun. Thanks. No, to, I, I, enjoyed it. No, I definitely. And, and thank you for coming on the Av Podcast. I definitely appreciate you for, for doing this. And, you know, I'd love to have you again in the future, you know, especially before the, the get, year's out, the college season yeah, is get, out. Yeah, get, you can get more. Maybe me and Maureen can do one together. Yeah, no, absolutely. Appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you so get, much. Get your brother, too. <laughs> we'll see about him. <laughs> All right. All right, buddy.